You'll be sitting on this side. I'm, I'm going to stand next to the pages. Next, jump. Have you ever? Well, you can see it a lot better over there. Tonight we begin at the home of Carol Jackson, whose husband has been killed in Iraq nearly nine months ago. She is doing her best to hide her sadness from her children and give them the best Christmas she possibly can. However, due to the downsizing of the factory where Miss Jackson was employed, she has found herself living on a much tighter budget than she had expected for the holidays. She is relying on her faith in God and using this opportunity to show her two children, Emily and Zach, that despite all their hardships, God is with them, and that this would still be a wonderful Christmas. While Zach is trying his best to understand, Emily is having no part of a Christmas that now she sees only as a profitable time to get lots of gifts. After all, in her mind, why celebrate the birthday of an uncaring Savior? If God was so great, then why did he take her dad away? Let's see if Emily will discover the true meaning of Christmas. I know you're the keeper of promises. And you promised 
this is Savior. And even though he died an agonizing death for all of us, and we didn't understand then what was happening, I look to you now because I know you understand my tears. Clearly, Emily is struggling with her mom's ideal for Christmas. Her parents have raised Emily to believe in the birth of Jesus, but everything she has been through in the last nine months has shaken her beliefs to the very core. At this point, Emily is not sure what she believes about Christmas. And like many teens, when she wasn't satisfied with her mom's answer, she decided to get a second opinion about Christmas from her friends. So Emily called a group of her friends and asked them to meet her at the mall. And that's where our next scene picks up, at the Grove Mall. Yeah, we're still here at the mall. What was it you and your mom argued about? <coughs> hey, tell her about the Christmas festival. Maddie says you should come to the Christmas festival with us later on. Oh, come on. Well, at least come by so we can talk about it. It'll make you feel better. Okay, see you in a few. She come? I don't know. She always needs our prayers to cut She's going through a tough time. Remember how she used to always come to church with the family? We had so much fun with her in Sunday school. But lately she's just mad all the time. Yeah, I know. She doesn't seem too excited when I mentioned going to the park. You guys talk about Emily? Kevin, don't be so nosy. Well, I'm sitting out here. I couldn't help but hear with your big mouth. <laughs> Anyways, well, I was going to say Emily has been saying since her dad died. Imagine. Christmas is going to be really hard for the dads to be this year. Yeah, we just need to pray for them and always let Emily know that we're here for her. New Kevin, was that your stomach? Yeah, I'm starving. <laughs> Must be waiting for my brother David. 
here before the Christmas festival. But I'm tired of waiting on him, so if you guys see him, tell him I'm in the food court. He's so goofy. I can't believe we got to make twins out of that. <laughs> he is strange, but he's right. Emily hasn't been herself, and that's when Satan likes to be around. We really need her to get her to come to the Christmas festival with us tonight. Every brother talk to her. Sounds like a great idea. Emily's friends are on the right track. Getting her to talk to the pastor may be the best thing for Emily. Her confusion has allowed her emotions to control her every thought.
Trent and Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered this since this first took place while Quirinius was going governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because 